Good morning. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Oh, I need the Portuguese as well. Soon. It's Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and the Insegna Booksellers. And uh, this morning is, um, uh, is another one of those uh, languages and cultures uh, series, really, because I want to cover all of the languages slowly but surely. But the one that I'm very familiar with is French uh, from study, not from daily use in France or anywhere else with the French people. Spanish, I don't really know, but I'm trying to learn it online and uh, introducing a bit of Portuguese to show how close it is to Spanish, but quite different. Uh, because, you know, the three languages that I've just mentioned, plus Italian and the Romanian, derive from Latin. So that's, uh, and I'm covering a bit of Latin now in the Italian class on Tuesdays. So today is the f Friday, the 28th of October, 2022. And uh, the idea now is to do about half an hour for French, a quarter of an hour for Spanish, a bit of Portuguese, and I close it off. Because then at 12.30, uh, Channel 31 has my a repeat program uh, for, uh, for my, you know, uh, contributions to them as community television. It's half an hour, uh, twice a week. Uh, on Tuesdays, one thirty, and uh, Fridays at 12.30. So uh, things are moving on, you know, because once you've done the, the work and uh, you, you're happy with that, you can move on to do other things as well. But there is a, a line to it. There is a, it's like a road. I, I pick up the road and slowly I walk through it, uh, I drive through it and stop and start and go sideways to, you know, other roads or other streets, whatever it is. In other words, I enjoy myself doing it, and hopefully there is a thread through my presentations uh, that will make sense to you. So the more you uh, sort of um, go through my programs, the more you get to know me and how I operate. Uh, it's important that uh, you are able to access my work from, uh, you know, from the beginning. This is lesson 32 for French, Spanish, and, uh, you know, I've mentioned a few languages along the way, but only mentioned them, but I've concentrated myself on French and uh, Spanish. Now, I try to connect the French that I do online with uh, my, my classes at, um, my class of French at the U3A, at the University of the Third Age. And then straight after that, there is um, the Italian lesson. So uh, it's sort of trying to connect the languages and what it means to uh, be aware of uh, your own language uh, through other languages, because other languages are windows to your language. You look out and you can look in. So by studying another language, it's like teaching. If when you're teaching other people and they are there, you learn from them as well, and therefore you progress as a teacher. So if you don't know very much about a subject matter, start teaching it and then prepare for your students. You don't have to be a teacher to be a teacher. You can teach, but you know when you are a qualified teacher, it's all different. You've gone through all these, um, uh, you know, all these uh, lessons, if you like, in in practical ways uh, during the course of studies at a university or a tertiary institution, and you move on. So that, that's it. Now, the other thing I want to mention is uh, the songs that I've done. I wanted to do more songs, but, uh, but you know, I'm very busy at the moment. <laughs> I've taken on a bit, but I enjoy it, and that's important. Today, with the Spanish, I'm going to introduce another song uh, f by using my iPhone. Okay, so, the, you know, you look up the lyrics of the song and you go for it. And, you know, of course, you have to become familiar with the, the original singer.
Okay, so that's that for uh, for start. It's 11.30, time to start. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go, first of all, uh, to uh, to the words, you know, adjectives. The adjectives. And before that, I was going to say cheers to you. Okay. Adjectives. Ciao, Antonio Danzi. Welcome. Adjectives ending in E-U-R form the feminine by changing E-U-R to E-U-S-E. If the adjective is derived from a verb, otherwise the feminine ends in R-I-C-E. So let's have a look. Flatteur, which means flattering. Flatteur, flatteurs. Monteur, monteurs. Moqueur, moqueuse. Trompeur, trompeuse. Conservateur, conservatrice. So, notice flatter, flatter, change to flatters, E-U-S-E, for in the feminine. It's flattering. Monteur is lying. Moqueur is mocking someone. Trompeur is deceitful or deceptive. And then conservateur is conservatrice, I-C-E. So, what did we read here? Adjectives ending in EUR form the feminine by changing EUR to EUS if the adjective is derived from a verb. Remember, if the adjective derives from the verb, then it, you have to use the EUR, change the EUSE. And then, if it's not, it becomes R I, uh, it becomes uh, R I C E, conservatrice from conservateur. So it's important. The other one is créateur, not, not a verb, but it should be crea créatrice. Or créateur. They say it's not, but to create is also. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have to go with what um, the book says. I don't always agree with the book, okay? But, uh, but you know, it's a guide. Protec protector, protectrice. If you are interested in... Uh, these uh, lessons here, uh, you know, see me and get yourself the books and you can follow me online and it'll be much easier and much more satisfying. Next one, exceptions. Of course, with every rule in French or Italian or Spanish, or Portuguese, there are always exceptions. Uh, language is not a science. It's a science and an art. It's two things. You know, with science, with maths, the very precise, you know, the straight jacket subject. You, you know, you have to follow exactly what they say. But here you have to learn the exceptions. Some of the exceptions. Anterior, anterior, anterior. Exterior, exterior. Inferior, inferior. Here they only add the E. Anterior and anterior in the feminine, just the E is added. To it. Inferior, inferior, interior, interior, mayor, mayor, meilleur, meilleur, mineur, mineur, posterior, posterior, superior, superior. Notice the pronunciation is the same for both sing, the, the, the masculine and the feminine, but it could be a slight difference if you say anterior in, um, in, in the masculine. But anterior in the feminine, it sort of stretched the R a bit. So, la fille est heureuse. Son attitude est sérieuse. Ou est sérieux. L'attitude, la attitude, I think it's feminine. L'homme est furieux. Le miel est doux. Le est doux, est doux. La chanson est, est douce, douce. La chevelure est rousse. Notice here, some of them retain the, the same, uh, the same adjective in the masculine. La réponse is feminine. Et fausse, F-A-U. X, you have to change it. 
the, the FIUX in the masculine into the feminine. You have to know how it works. I'm not sure when you look at a dictionary whether they give you the feminine as well. Welcome to Zoraida as well, Moros. La fille est monteuse. La loi est protectrice. C'est la meilleure, meilleure chose. C'est une femme créatrice. C'est la cause meilleure. Now, that's what's for adjectives ending in you, you are. Are you expected to know all that? No. This is just a beginning. It's a walk in the jungle of, of uh, rules for languages. Because it's a bit of a jungle. You have to, you have to learn to navigate it, to walk through it. Adjectives ending in F. Adjectives ending in F in the masculine change F to VE. is to form the feminine. Active. Actif, active, becomes active in the feminine. Attentif, attentive. Bref, brève. Destructif, destructif. Neuf, neuve. Sportif, sportive. Vif, vive. And they were active, attentive, brief, destructive, new, athletic, alive and lively. Easy one. So whenever you see... Uh, a word in French ending in F, it has to turn into uh, the VE in the feminine. Now, adjectives ending in C. Adjectives in C change C to C H E to form the feminine. Blanc, for example, it's blanche. La, you know, you tombe la neige, la neige est blanche. You remember that? Blanche, Fran Franc, 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 Frank, you know, when you Frank with somebody, speak clear. Sec, sesh, that's dry. Not the grave accent on sesh. Sec, sesh. So, you know, it's again, note the grave accent. Okay, I've noted it, but I don't have it in, in practice. You've got to remember then in the practice, in the reading part. Don't forget what I'm doing now is not French. It's about French. It's not French. It's the explanation of French. Uh, the, the actual practice is what la pratica, you know, the practice beats grammar. But without the grammar, you can't improve or learn, you know, the, the language. So you need to do the grammar. Grec is Grec, G R E C Q U E. Grec. Public, public. P U P B L I C in in um, in English, uh, sorry in the in the singular and public uh, P U B L I Q U E, okay. So, what about if I just show you a little bit of these words so far? Okay, let's go. Oh, Talana Sika is on. Welcome, Talana. Good to see you. Now, I'm going to show you the, 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 what we've done. There you are, see? Flatteur, flatteuse, menteuse, moqueuse. These are, these are the ones that you need to learn. Okay? Anterreur, see? And then you do the exercises. It's a wonderful book. But I have to order some more copies if people order them. So, you know. Uh, might, you mightn't be able to get it straight away from me. But anyway, if you do, it'll be very helpful and together with the other ones. Okay. Oop. Back again. All right, here we go. Greg, now, complete the following with the correct form of one of the adjectives listed be be below. Blanc, franc, public, grec, neuf, attentif, brep. Sec and sportif. So the, those are the adjectives given. And then there are nine uh, little exercises. La fille fait beaucoup d'attention en classe. Uh, la jeune fille, la, la fille, the, the young student uh, paying attention in class. Elle est, uh, elle est attentive. She, she pays attention. Cette robe n'est pas vieille. This, uh, you know, clothes, piece of cloth is not old. Elle est vieille. And 
That's, le garçon joue au sport, il est, euh, il est sportif. Sa réponse n'est pas longue, elle était bref. La nappe n'est pas noire, elle est blanche. Là, quand c'est blanche, blanche. La nappe n'est pas noire. You don't know what the word nappe is. Now that the I assume it's nappy or something like that. Piece of cloth. L'homme dit ce qu'il pense. Il est franc. The man is saying what he thinks. La robe n'est pas mouillée. Hein? Elle est ça, sec. La robe n'est pas mouillée. Elle est sèche. I made a mistake. It's easy to make a mistake. But if you make a mistake and the French hear you, so what? You're learning French. You've got all the excuses in the world to make mistakes. You should make mistakes so that you can pick yourself up. So that's, that's how it is. L'actrice eh, vient de la Grèce. So the actress comes from Greece. Elle est grecque. You have to remember the G-R-E-C-Q-E. Tout le monde elle, a le droit de fréquenter cette place. C'est une place publique. C'est une place publique. Because c'est une place, mais c'est féminin. Public, could you say public? I don't know, it's public. I think it's one of those uh, ones that um, don't change. But anyway, that's, that's the story. The, the, last, the last one, these are some irregular adjectives. Uh, some adjectives are completely irregular in the feminine, completely irregular. Aigu is aigu with uh, the two. Ambigu, ambigu, I better show you. Oh, yeah. See that? On the EU, there's... The sedia they called. Aigu. Ambigu, ambigu. Benin, benigne. Long, long. Favori, favorite. Malin, maligne. Frais, fraîche. Okay. La guille est aigu. La robe est longue. C'est ma chemise favori. You have to change that. C'est un enfant. That's feminine, see? Un enfant malin. Malin. Maligne. Maligne. C'est un... La viande est fraîche. So... That's it for today. There's a lot more. The, the adjective's got a lot of rules. Oh, my God. It's, you know... It's, the French language is difficult with... For, because of the... Because of the pronunciation rules, the phonology part and the grammar too, it's very, you know, it's quite complex, really. Where Spanish and Italian are, are simple, easier to, uh, to navigate, but they've got their own uh, difficulties too. Now, the next one that we're going to do. Let me look at my notes. Okay. I said that if you... I've done these two books here. Les femmes parlent trop et la Simone fait bonne impression. You have to go to my... You, you have to go to my... Um, my previous lessons. Available in insegna.com In the blog section. You got to blog. Where the language is right down the bottom. You get the blog, the blog section. Now, in the blog section, there are four subsections. One of them is languages and cultures. You hit that and you get my lesson. You have to go to lesson one. And the numbers are one, two, three, four, because on a page you can only fit so many. The, the first one, the first lesson is at the number five. It's the last, it's the last part of the of of the pages so the first page they it's the updated page so you're going to go back so once you get that you can follow 
these because not only have I read them, I've also explained them. Maybe Les Femmes Paltrois did very well. Simone Febben and Presson, I sort of, you know, uh, I sort of took more, I was more qu quicker. And the reason for that was simple. I, I assume that people who come on know a bit of French as well. So it's not, you know, totally new to it. Okay, so that's that. And now we're going to read. Now, this is La Pratica. Okay, this is one of the... And last week we did L'Ennemi de l'État. It's the enemy of the state. Okay, so I'm going to do some of it where you're listening to me and some of it where you are reading with me. Okay, so when you're reading with me, that's different. But if you, again, you need resources. You have to, uh, you, you need resources in order for you to maintain your enthusiasm for the language. You should have it next to your bed or, you know, on the coffee table, the, the French. And you just leave them there. You pick up for five minutes each day. Simple. Okay. L'ennemi de l'État, number two. Puisque je m'intéressais à cette boisson nationale, j'ai décidé de visiter Bordeaux pendant mon voyage en France. J'étais ravi de trouver que le syndicat d'initiative organisait un tour des vignes. Nous sommes partis très tôt le matin pour visiter des vignes pas loin de Bordeaux. Nous avons fait le tour d'une grande vigne. On a admiré les racines, les racines presque mûres, et on m'a permis de les goûter. La famille du vigneron nous a accompagnés pour nous expliquer comment on fait les vendages. Tous les enfants et les adultes du village travaillent ensemble pour cueillir les raisins. It's, it's quite easy. I almost understood all of it straight away. Okay, let's have a look at this. Puisque je m'intéressais à cette boisson nationale, j'ai décidé de visiter Bordeaux pendant mon voyage en France. So he went to Bordeaux. See? Syndicat, delighted, ravi. Nous sommes partis très tôt le matin pour visiter des vignes pas loin, pas loin de Bordeaux. Bordeaux is famous for its wineries. Nous avons fait le tour d'une grande vigne. On a admiré les racines presque mûres. Okay, they're almost uh, grapes that are ready to eat. Et on m'a permis de les goûter. And now I could taste some of them. La famille du vigneron nous a accompagnés pour nous to explain how on fait le vendage. So she wanted to explain how they pick the grapes. Tous les enfants et les adultes du village travaillent ensemble pour cueillir. So all one in the in the town help out to to get to gather the grapes so that they can make the wine. That's the way it was once upon a time. Now I'm going to keep on reading, and you can now listen. Hopla. Come back to me. Okay, here we go. Plus tard, on nous a amené dans une cave où j'ai vu, je vu le vin qui fermentait dans d'énormes barriques. Il y avait là un homme qui goûtait le vin. J'ai pensé qu'il devait être vivre avec un tel travail, mais il m'a montré qu'il n'avale jamais le vin. Il le goûte puis il le crache. So there is some, uh, somebody there, uh, they take, they, they show him how they make the grape, the, the wines, etc. When it's all done, there's a man who tastes the wine, and, but he doesn't get drunk because he doesn't swallow the wine. They just taste it. Après la visite, j'étais vraiment content parce que j'avais bien appris comment on cultive les vignes. On nous a, <coughs> on nous a invité à prendre quelque chose à boire dans ce petit café. Uh, prendre quelque chose à boire. To have something to drink, see? Then 
they told me to drink. So I did it. Que désirez-vous, monsieur? a demandé le garçon en vigneron. Apportez-moi un verre de vin rouge, a-t-il dit. Et vous, monsieur, le garçon a répété à une autre touriste, la même chose, s'il vous plaît, il a répondu en souriant. Souriant. Enfin, le garçon m'a demandé, vous, vous, voulez-vous que je vous apporte aussi la même chose, monsieur? « Mais bien sûr, » a répondu le vigneron pour moi. Tout innocent, j'ai répondu, « Apportez-moi un Coca-Cola. <rire> » À ce moment, une bagarre a commencé. Les hommes et les femmes se sont servis de toutes les choses possibles pour me faire du mal. Ils ont commencé à m'attaquer, à déchirer mes vêtements, à lancer des pierres et à m'appeler en ami de l'État. J'avais peur d'être tué. Ça ne valait pas la peine de protester, ni de crier, ni de pleurer. Si les gendarmes n'étaient pas venus, la foule n'aurait tué. Parce que dans le vin, 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 it's in, in two parts. Now, the idea of this book here, again, come and get it, or order it, whatever, is that I'm going to get my students to actually translate a bit at a time. Because as an adult, as an adult, you are able to learn the language faster than children. And you know why? Welcome to Benny Lachura. You can learn it faster because you can transfer your English into French. Whereas a, a child needs to have the language around him to pick up the, uh, to, to pick it up. And they don't know the cognitive part, the, the part of the brain that has already gone through the stages. So if you're going through a one jungle, you know how to walk through another jungle. But if you've never been in a jungle, you don't know what's coming or what's going or whatever. That's the same with the, that's the same with uh, with a language. So if you want to go through the jungle for the first time, you don't need to because you're an adult. You've already been there. Okay. So the next one is pendant pendant. Where do I put it? Here we go. Parlons français. Now this one here, this book here does the just the the speaking part so you you know you can't you need resources use your i'm going to sing a song but not i'm, I'm gonna sing well i should sing a song before this one and here we are i'm gonna do i'm gonna do la nuit by my good friend you know who he is Salvatore Adamo. Salvatore Adamo, born 1st of November 1943, is a Belgian musician and singer of Italian origin, known for his romantic ballads. Uh, as he grew up from a very early age in Belgium and has made the country his homeland, he first gained popularity through Europe uh, in the Middle and the Middle East, Latin America, Japan, and the United States. He has sold more than 80 million albums. That was when this was. He's probably sold 100 million by now. 20 million making one of the most commercially successful people. And one of the songs is La Nuit, La Notte, La Nuit. Si je t'oublie pendant le jour, je me passe, je passe mes nuits à te maudire. Et quand la lune se retire, je l'âme vide et le cœur lourde, lourde. La nuit, tu m'apparais immense. Je tends les bras pour te saisir, mais tu prends un malin plaisir à te jouer de mes avances. Welcome, Angela Imler. La nuit, je deviens fou, je deviens fou, et puis ton rire fond le noir, et je ne sais plus où chercher. Quand tout se tait, revient l'espoir, et je me reprends à tes mères. 
Tonton, tu me reviens fugace et tu m'appelles pour mes nargares, mais chaque fois mon sang se glace, ton rire vient tout effaceur. La nuit, je deviens fou, je deviens fou. Le jour dissipe ton image et tu repars, je ne sais où, vers celui qui te tient en cage, celui qui va me rendre fou. La nuit, je deviens fou, je deviens fou, fou, fou. <laughs> I'm getting better at this now. It, after so much practice, you get better. You see what I mean? I didn't worry too much. I just went into it. It was good. That's, that's good. But now, today, I'm going to do a new one in Spanish. See how we go then. Okay. Now, where are we? How, what's the time? Uh, we've only got four minutes. Okay. This one here, I'm just going to read the... I'm just going to read... Uh, what's, it's here. A map of Europe, okay, and I'm going just to describe, see? And I can't... Oh, voici une carte de l'Europe, la France, l'Angleterre, l'Allemagne, la Suisse, l'Italie, l'Espagne. Elles sont des pays d'Europe. Les États-Unis ne sont pas en Europe. C'est un pays de l'Amérique du Nord. La plus grande ville de France est Paris. Paris est aussi la capitale de la France. Les autres grandes capitales européennes sont Londres, Berlin, Rome, Madrid, Vienne. À Paris, comme dans toute la France, comme, comme dans toute la France, c'est le féminin de, you pronounce the, the, the T. Toute la, on parle français. À Londres, on parle anglais. Comme à New York, à Berlin et à Vienne, on parle l'allemand. À Rome, on parle italien et à Madrid, comme en Amérique centrale et dans presque tous les pays de l'Amérique du Sud, on parle espagnol. So there you are. You go through the, uh, through the adjectives uh, of nationalities. Okay. Well... That's the, um, I won't do the, the exercises. I was going to do the exercise, but I'm not going to do that. I would rather, to finish off, sing another song. <laughs> you remember Edith Piaf? Have you learned it by now? Come on. Des yeux qui font baisser les miens Un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche Voilà le portrait sans retouche de l'homme auquel j'appartiens. Quand il me prend dans ses, dans ses bras, il me parle tout bas. Je vois l'avion rose. Now, notice, I have begun the song, La Vie. But what's in my brain at the moment? It's La Nuit. So therefore, I'm not really, in a, you need a bit of time to get into uh, in, in, into the rhythm of the song. There you, you have to, and if you can't remember, then look up Edith Piaf, hear her sing, uh, because if I do, they, uh, they won't let me put my, my material across. I can't, I can only sing myself. They, you know, they want to put a bit of music, <laughs> you get into, They've got, um, you know, the, the music is, industry is very well organised. So they keep tracks of everything. But, okay. Oh, well, that was Edith Piaf. Now, Edith Piaf, we did La Vie en Rose. We did, no, rien de rien. No, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien comme a fait. Ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal. No, rien de rien. No, je ne regrette rien. C'est payé, balayé, oublié. Je me fous du passé. You remember that one? Yeah, we did it last week as well. Okay. 
Now this one here, this is the lyrics of Milord. Allez, venez, milord, vous s'asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est inconfortable. Laissez-vous faire, milord, et prenez bien vos s, vos peines sur mon cœur et vos pierres sur une chaise. Je vous connais, milord, vous m'avez jamais vu. Je suis qu'une fille du porte. De la rue. Now, there's a three songs that we've done from, uh, from our dear Edith Piaf. And the two ones, of course, we did the other one, La Nuit, but there's also Salvatore Adamo, again, Tombe la neige, tu ne viendras pas ce soir. Tombe la neige, et mon cœur s'habille de noir, c'est soyez cortège. Tout en larmes blanches, l'oiseau sur la branche, pleure le sortilège. Tu ne me viendras pas ce soir. Bla, 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 bla. And that's it. And you can translate the songs. And that's enough for today, for French. And now we go to Spanish. Espanol. So let, let me see how we're going to start. I'm going to start with some phrases first. I was going to do this last. Now I'm going to start first. And if you like French, stay with me with, with Spanish. It's not a bad idea. When you want to say, I like it in Spanish, you say, me gusta. I don't like it. No me gusta. I'm not sure. No estoy seguro. I don't know. No sé. No sé. I didn't know. No sabía. Or no sabía. No sabía. I think so. Creo que sí. Creo que sí. I'm hungry. Tengo hambre. I'm thirsty. Tengo sed. I'm tired, estoy cansado, o estoy cansada. I'm in a hurry, tengo prisa. I'm really ready, estoy listo, estoy listo, o estoy lista. Leave me alone, por favor, de hema, de hema. Just a moment, un momento. Por qué, this way please, por qué sigame. A prisi sigame. Take a seat. Sien, siéntese. Siéntese. Come in. Adelante. 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 Come in. It's cheap or expensive. El barato. El caro. It's too much. Es demasiado. Es demasiado. It's too much. That's all. Es todo. Es todo. You're right. Tiene razón. You are wrong. No tiene razón. That's a nice one with phrases. A few phrases for, the, for today. It's great. And after the phrases, of course, comes a bit of the grammar. The grammar. For example, we're going to do the verb to have. Let me see. When we have seen that of or from is translated by de and to or at by a. Thus of the house and to the church are rendered by de, la casa, a, la iglesia, respectively. One would therefore expect of the palace and to the king to be translated as de el palacio and a el rey. But this would sound ugly. Consequently, de el is contracted to del and al, el to al, and we write del palacio and al rey. A bit like the prepositions. That's what happens there. No such contraction, however, takes place with any other form of the article but L, because in other cases, the ugly sound does not occur. Thus, to the man, a los hombros. And of a father, de un padre, or de una madre. In English, we use the apostrophe S to denote possession, e.g. John's letter. Or my brother's sister, sister's house. In Spanish, as in French, there's no such usage. And we must alter the phrase to the letter of John and the house of my brother or sister. As say, la, la carte de Juan, 
Din Juan e la casa de mi hermano. The verb haber. In Spanish there are two verbs to have. Tener and haber. Yo tengo, tu tienes, tu tienes. We did that. El, we did that last time, but we'll do it again soon. Uh, of the tener is used as a principal verb and means to hold or to possess. Real possession. You say, tengo, tengo un libro. I have a book. I, I own it. Haber is used as an auxiliary verb. It helps the other verbs in the, when they complement, when there's a, a perfect tense or, you know, one of those past tenses. As they are called of other verbs. So it's used to form the compound tenses. Compound. As they are called of other verbs. It is generally therefore followed by a past participle, i.e. that part of the verb which we generally use in English after I have taken, seen, written, etc. Thus I have a watch, tengo un reloj, reloj. But I have bought, sold, lost my watch. Yo he comprado, vendido o perdido mi reloj, reloj. In the first instance, sentence, it is the fact of possessing the watch that is important. In the second, the buying, selling or losing of it, the, the have merely indicate, indicating that the action took place recently. Okay, so present tense of haber. I have yo e, tu as, el, el, a, uh, usted, a, usted, a, nosotros hemos, nosotras hemos, vosotros habéis, vosotros habéis. Vosot, vosotros you have in the plural vosotros habéis you have uh, what do I say there you have uh, vosotros habéis vosotros han you have they have elos han they have elas han in compound tenses those formed by a tense of haber plus some Past participle, the negative no, comes before the auxiliary. Yo no he visto el cuchillo. I have not seen the knife. Yo no he visto el cuchillo. Usted, usted, no ha escrito la carta. You have not written the, the letter. When the present tense of haber is used in an interrogative sentence, the subject is generally placed after the past principal uh, participle. Han legado los hombros, have the men arrived. Han gastado vos su dinero, have you spent your money. No ha alado el sus libros, hasn't he found his books. Ha comprado el café, ha comprado el café. As she bought any coffee, it will be noticed that from this last sentence that any is usually untranslated in Spanish before a noun. Tiene, tiene usted dinero? Do you have? Ha perdido usted el dinero? Have you lost the money? Busco mi sombrero? Busca mi amigo, busca Carlos. I look for my hat, I look for my friend, for Charles. So this is, again, Spanish grammar. We need the practice, but you need also... It takes a bit of time. My, my head is <laughs> it's spinning a little bit now. Too much Spanish. I better do some singing. But I wanted to do this. I ask some questions, you know. A few exercises. Que es importante? What is important? El idioma inglés es importante. The English language is important. Que es importante? El, computador, el computadora es importante. It's the, the computer is important. La telenovela es importante. La lección de español es importante. 
Il, pro, il programma di musica è importante, la conversazione è importante. So you repeat these things here. Okay, there are a lot more, uh, a lot more exercises. Again, if you want to learn Spanish, come and see me. I can get all your, I can do two things. I can get your resources, I can give you some, and I can give you some tips about where you're at with Spanish or with French and how you to proceed ahead. I'm making it pretty clear now, but one-to-one -one and the ability to be able to come to me any time you like, it, it's important. Okay, now I'm going to read here. El Dia de la Lengua, we did this last week. But before I do that, Before I do that, I want to see, because I didn't, I wasn't quite happy with Historia de un Amor last week. Oh, so I'll start with Cuando Caliente el Sol. Cuando caliente el sol, aquí en la playa, siendo tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí, es tu palpitar, es tu cara, es tu pelo, son tus besos, me estremezco. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol, aquí en la playa, siendo tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí, es tu palpitar, tu recuerdo, mi locura, mi delirio, mi estremezco. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol, love me with all your heart, That's all I want, love. Love me with all your heart, or oh, not at all. Just promise me this, that you give me all your kisses every summer, every winter, every fall. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol. At sunset. Cuando calienta el sol. And now this is Historia de un Amor, beautiful song. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y así ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir, adorarte para mí for religion, and tus besos encontraba el calor que me brindabas, el amor y la pasión. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mi vida, apagándola después, ay, que vida, tan obscura. Ya no estás mal, sin tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mí. Oh, no, that one there. See that little bit there? Es la historia de un amor. No, es la historia de un amor. I, I can't get it. So you need to listen to the, you need to listen to the singer and then come back to it. The first part was good and I can continue next, the next part. Es la historia de un amor. No, no. It doesn't come. See? And that's what happens. It can happen to you too. And to me, it's happening right now. <laughs> okay. The other part that you need to do is, uh, is the, the other place. I've got this one here. Madre España, Madre España, ¿a que no sabes lo que vamos a hacer hoy? ¿Cómo voy a saber lo que vosotras eleváis en, esa, en esas cabecitas? Me parece que veniste gala. ¿Qué sucede? Pues sí, es el caso, Madre España, que hace uno Dios, etc., etc. So, and that should be done with, you, with a friend. So you need about I'd say four people, three, four people, uh, form a little group. If you form a little group, you know, four or five people, five people would be better. Uh, it's, you know, it's cheaper that way. If you come and see me and you want a lesson, 
you know, if you've got five people coming, much easier. Let me have a look here. Now, this one here is Nova Historia. That's, that this is for, uh, for Portuguese. That's it there. Yeah. I'm going to... Aos Professores. Now, I've never read uh, the Portuguese. <coughs> Let me have a look. Atendendo a, as opinio, opiniones dos colegas, procuramos manter a estrutura do manual en barra modificando en parte o texto a introduzindo algumas altera coes. Hasim cada tema será, será introduzido como un gravura erosiva. That was uh, the beginning of, um, of the book. So, and then you got to, you know, this is a history book for your right students in Portugal. Okay, so let me see if I can uh, do something for you. Here we are. Okay, oh, beautiful, look at this. A abertura del mundo. Yeah, have a look. This is what um, this is what uh, Portuguese looks like, a bit like Spanish. Foi pensando assim que em Otto, I don't know the, the number, de julio de 1497, uma armada portuguesa comandada por Vasco de Gama, composta pelas naus San Gabriel, San Rafael, uma outra com com combattimento mantimentesso e a caravela Berio parte de Lisboa come destino a India però <coughs> well they starting this um particular book, a history book. This one is called Nova Historia. Oop. Nova Historia. Nova Historia. See, there, of Portugal. And then they got like this, see? The maps, the very beautiful books they are. They really are. And you see, then, you know, then they got to Europe, Rumas, Rumos da expansão quatrocentista. So by going across the Europe, so get the uh, you get the culture of the country. Okay, from way back. That's enough for today. I'm, I'm losing, not losing my voice, but um, almost there. <laughs> however, however. This morning I just put up um, six new songs for Coral Improviso as well on uh, Facebook. So enjoy those and uh, make comments. Comment. Don't just say a good, you know, I just want some, not criticism, but even some guidance of the things that you would like me to do for you. Okay. On that note, I bid you farewell. Buenos dias again. And uh, it's Tom Padula from Tombadula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. Until next time, which will be next Friday, let's hope, and uh, see you then. Ciao.